Hi, it's Jez here from ladders.co.uk and I'm here with another one of my junk journal series and um, we're doing a little bit of Edith Holden today. Um, I've got the country diary of an Edwardian lady and um, I haven't yet um, brought brought myself to sort of cut it up but I was in um, a charity shop the other week and I saw this, the country diary of crafts and um, so I had a little flick through and um, it, it is a different crafts, lots of cross stitching, knitting, embroidery, stuff like that. But it does have some great images um, through it of, um, of, of from Edith Holden's book. So I thought, oh, I could use those. And at the beginning of each section, it goes through the whole year. We've got these beautiful pages here. So we've got one for each each month. So I thought, well, if nothing else, it's worth it for those 12 uh, sheets to have um, each month um, of the year. Oh, I don't know where it's where the other month is, but there is there is. There we go. Um, so I thought they're great at the top of each page. There's a, a little butterfly uh, and a month. So I started thinking, oh, I could use it for a sort of a diary, a planner. There's a few patterns like this, which I thought would be interesting as well in a, a junk journal. Um, and then you've got images like this within within the pattern. So I thought, well, there's enough in here um, to, to use. And um, there's also pictures in here which I probably would never use and there's these lovely sort of cross stitch patterns as well which I thought would be interesting I quite like the colour of the page I mean it's not exactly a vintage book um, but you've got those images from the country diary when was it printed um, oh 1997 this uh, this edition so yeah not any vintage at all but they're using vintage pictures now I bought this uh, from Oxfam and it, they were doing an offer on three books for a fiver so that was okay. It was originally, I think they wanted two ninety nine for it, actually. And then I saw it again, 50p in another shop. So I thought, oh, I'm going to buy it. So I've actually got two books. Um, so um, I have gutted it. So I was just going to show you um, the sort of parts that I used after gutting it. And I've just noticed, because I have been playing with it, um, that they've got a different finish on the pages this one's a bit shinier than that one which i hadn't noticed before but you know hey -ho. um and this one's got a different cover so obviously the other one i've got is a different edition so this one's got a shiny cover and the one that i have gutted i think must have been an earlier edition so because it's got um it had the brown cover like so um, and this sort of nice writing here. So I gutted it, and then when I went to gut the back, I did the first part of it with a pair of scissors running it along, and um, it wasn't very efficient. Then I found my craft knife, and then I managed to take it all off. But it, I would the spine wasn't big enough to use for anything anyway, so um, I didn't mind that too much. And I got this interesting bit off the back, and I thought, oh, I might use that for something. I don't know. Um, it had the a dust cover, which which I've kept. And so I'm using this file folder um, to sort of separate all, all the bits that um, I've used. I'm going to stay a little bit tidy by putting them all back. So I sort of put the cover in the front, then the dust cover. And then I went through the book. And um, so I've got all these lovely lovely months so there we have january february march april may june july have a dragonfly august and it's got these lovely sayings as well which are really really quite light September, beautiful birds. Butterfly features in all of them. October, November, my birthday. How beautiful. What colours are those? Those are just stunning. And then Christmas. What a lovely Christmas picture that is. 
Okay, so those were those were the months. I liked those. Bit upset about that, but as I've got both of them, I can. I've got two sets, so I can use these. I think that's the only page where there's something on the other side that I would want to use. And I thought about making some sort of yearly planner with this that I would reuse it every year. So I haven't quite sort of thought about it fully. Then in the index page, it's got um, all the all the months. So I, um, I uh, ripped out all the months. Um, and that's in the same sort of font from the Edith Holden books, quite like that. And then I went through and picked out other other words um, that, that appear. So it's sort of all very um, nature orientated. So I went through and got all those out. And then I went through the arduous task of taking off the top of every page because the top of every page has got a butterfly and the month. And then some of them had these sort of nice headings as well which I thought would be be useful so I cut all of them so they are there ready in another part of my file I just thought this was quite a good way of sorting it out I took the the header pages so I've got the um yeah I can see this one they wanted 2 99 for it but in the end I got three for a fiver so it was all right I did um an R, two ninety nine. Oh, that's quite a lot of money, really, for something I'm just going to um, break up. Yeah, so this one is slightly earlier. Not much earlier, actually. 1977. It was originally printed in the mid-80s, about the same time as the Edith Holden books. So, and then I really liked this brown. I thought, oh, I could use that for something. So, yep. Don't like a waste of things, so they're in there. So the entire book's in this uh, folder. And then I went through the pages. I was quite methodical with it. So then I went through and I got all the pages that have got bits of bits of Edith Holden's. I've used quite a bit of that. Um, some of her drawings within the text so i went through and got all of those and oh, it's not that one but there is some that have got like nice white space on the back loved that used a bit of it for a tab so some of them are only little tiny bits snake not quite sure i'm going to use the snake but you know some are only tiny bits um but um so i got those i have used some already and then, so that goes in that slot. And then I went through and, um, oh, that's in the wrong place. Stick them in there. And then these were the bits of scraps that were left over from taking those bits off. So they're sort of partly used bits so I sort of don't like to throw anything out so I've got a section in this folder for scraps this is useful because it allows me to create and then put it back and I think as this is the first book I've gutted and done something like this that I might carry on organizing myself in this way up until now I've just like gone through books and torn out pages as and when but I think you get a better rip when you gut it then I went through and picked out all the ones that have got patterns. So they've got cross stitch patterns um, in it, which I thought was quite nice on the blue grid paper. I thought that would be quite interesting. And there's also like drawn sort of sewing patterns as well, which I quite liked. And I thought it was quite nice on the back of a journaling card because you can sort of write on that. So there's quite a few of those. So nice. And some of these are quite nice images as well. So I've got these separate to use um, as well. So I know exactly where to sort of find them and I'm not rushing through the hole. See, that's quite nice with the birds and it's upside down. But that's quite cool. And I just loved this. There was a bit of me that thought I might make the doll. I used to make soft toys a lot, even before I had children. 
I made them. Actually, that's when I started. And then we've got a pile of papers here that are just, they've got no patterns on and they've got no bits of either folding. We've got those. I wasn't sure if I was going to use those. But what we've got here is the possibility of picking out words. Um, so some of them have got the names of the projects, like Woodland there, could use that. So I can sort of flick through this to see if there's, um, so we've got poppies there. So there was, that's that rag doll, it's quite cute. Um, and actually some of these might be interesting to use as well. So they're separate. And then this last section is where there were pages and they had um, photos on both sides. So I was thinking I'm not going to use those. But then in the end, I did use one for the tab. So some of these colours are really quite nice in the background. So I did use them with my tab punch um, to make a tab for a tag. So it actually proved quite useful. And then in the back there is where... I wanted to get that out for to show you the patterns that put that back where it belongs. And so these are what I've made so far. So that is, as I say, I used the tab topper punch there to make that. And I think because the colour goes really well with these flowers, it um, makes quite a nice tab. So this is just... So this was a page that had that uh, print on it. I had another uh, lovely sort of drawing there. And then I've just backed it on one of those patterns. And um, I sewed around it. I haven't used my sewing machine for ages. And um, I thought that was really cool. And that could either be just clipped in or it could be um, stuck in to a page. Then I did... Um, this other, I did two exactly the same and um, I've sewn one and not sewn the other so you can see the difference so I just took a page actually this was the same page I just um, cut it in half folded it up and um, made made this pocket made a little thumb hole I did glue it and then I decided to sort of sew it and then I've just used bits of decorative elements there to um, make these tags and there are quite a bit in the book where it's completely plain so quite like that important note quite like that I've chosen some some words here to to decorate and that's mistletoe and so I was able to actually find the word so liked that and then I did one that I haven't sewn and again I've used some of that grid paper there um, some more plain stuff on the back there uh, to make that and then this last thing that I've made so far is just a little corner bit so this was on a page so I just cut it down and um, made these two tabs so that's ready to sew on a page to make a corner pocket and then I just sewed round it so I thought I'd show you how I made these okay so I've chosen a page here uh, that there's not really any writing on the back there that I would want to use. Here we've got woodland, but with some clever folding, we could actually use the woodland on this. So this was made using uh, the entire pocket and then I just cut it in half. So what I did was I just neaten that side there. So we'll just... Uh, trim that uh, put the straight edge at the top I know some people don't um, measure or use trimmers or anything but I quite like it I'm just going to take the top bit of that off so we are working now with the um, some straight edges so we want to what you've got to think about is I want to have 
writing it the right way there and writing in the right direction there. So you've got to put it upside down. So the piece facing you has all the words upside down and fold, fold up. So I want sort of guide by there. So if I go about there, I can see woodland at the bottom, which should be quite nice at the bottom of the uh, the pocket. I um, then don't have to worry about, you know, like here I've stuck word on, but I've already got, got it there. And then we fold this down there. Just use that as a guide and I'm doing it so that it comes underneath this. There, so we'll fold about there, all the way across, like so. Now that's going to go on the inside and be stuck down, and that is the outside. And then we're just going to chop it in half, so you can, you can measure, or you can just go, that's the midway, and then put that on your trimmer. Cut it in half or use a pair of scissors if you prefer. Uh, doesn't actually matter that they're not exact. I lost where it was there. It's there. So it doesn't actually matter that it's not completely in half, but that's what I did there and it wasn't completely in half. So they are going to be two different sizes, which is fine. Absolutely fine. And, um, and then I took uh, a little circle punch. This is a one and a half inch, just happens to be what's handy. And I sort of eyeball the center and do the same on this one. Go in, I don't know, about a quarter of the way down. So it's uh, not going below where that is. So doing that and then I did ink the edges and um, I like to use my for this I've used um, stamping up cinnamon cider which I thought went really well um, you kind of use whatever ink you've got I know lots of people use um, distress inks one other thing I will do is use my bone folder Crease those really well. And there's there's no end to the well there is an end to how many pockets I can make because it's uh, it's dependent on how many sheets of paper there are in the book, but I could make loads of these because there was loads of sheets of paper in the book. So uh I did think about sewing afterwards, which is why on this stitched one, it doesn't go around here, but I'm thinking I'm going to stitch this one because I think that would be cool. So just going up, up the edge there. So I've, re I've just come back from holiday. This is... We're on Tuesday now, aren't we? So we got back on late Saturday night. Sunday was a complete and utter exhausted day and um, didn't do very much at all. And then uh, yesterday I had loads of catching up to do. And um, and then I just sat for a couple of hours. My, my son came over and they watched a bit of rugby. And... Um, I just made these. I love, well, I gutted the book. I made these watching telly and um, I uh, I really enjoyed it. So I am going to now, going to get my sewing machine and I'm actually going to sew um, around this bit and then I'll stick this down and then sew around the whole of that so I'll get that done 
and um, well, I'll do the first bit of sewing and then we'll do the gluing together. Oops. So I'm just moving the sewing machine to the side there so I don't have to keep picking it up and picking it, putting it down. I went slightly wrong there, but I actually don't um, don't mind the way it looks. The, the tension, it's not the greatest sewing machine. It does need a bit of a, a bit of a service probably, but I'm only sewing paper with it now. I'm not sewing clothes, so it doesn't really matter. So that's that bit done. So now I'm just going to glue this bit down here. So just put bits of glue around here using collar glue. Glue that down there. And then I'm just going to put a small bead up the sides. to fold the pocket. Now, obviously the sewing will help. The glue would glue will hold anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but um, the sewing will help it as well. So that's that glued. Do this bit first and the paper's quite thick so it's not a vintage book so it's um some of those can be quite um quite thin but this paper's quite thick quite nice so they're going to be strong pockets So I did want to try and see if I could make a journal with using only this book was some thoughts I had. Then I can use the other book just to complement um, other books, like the bit of Edith Holden in different books. So. I am now going to sew completely around this square on both of them. All right. Right. Well, that took a little bit longer than I wanted it to. I am the, the, the thread broke four times on this and the needle broke as well. Uh, and then that one went in one go. That's just that's me and my sewing machine. So I've pulled out some bits with some decorative elements to make the tags. Not sure what I'm going to use yet. And then I'm going to use this to make the tag. Now I made these ones. They're three and a half inch square. But um, these are not the same size. So... Um, this one could be a little bit bigger, although I might leave it at three and a half inch square, but this one needs to be smaller. So I'll probably make that um, three by three and a half. So I'm going to use this. So I cut it. So I might go again there. If I go to seven. that way that gives us our three and a half inch height and then I'm going to do one at three inches and one maybe three and three quarter wide okay and then I'm just going to fold it in half And fold that one in half. So I'm not using any cardstock, just using the paper from the book itself. So we've got that one. I might actually trim a little bit more off that. That one's fine. I might leave that at three and a half actually. Oh bang wallop there we are I think that will be better yeah it will okay and all 
all I did with these is just glued glued them down. Um, I'm going to just use a bit of a glue stick to glue them down because I want it to go all the way up to the corners. just rub that off this is a teflon non-stick mat that i'm using it's heat resistant i used it to cut something with a cutting system and um, managed to cut through it like a wally wasn't thinking, brain not engaged that day, but it still works. Right, so let's get this rubbed off and I will turn the mat actually. So now, here's in my bone folder and that will ensure that it's all stuck down. So there's no sort of lifting of the edges. Of course, I am going to sew round it as well I probably wouldn't trust glue stick to stick if I wasn't sewing around it there we go I know lots of people do I watch lots of um, different people and they swear by glue sticks but I don't know I suppose I always just think of the rubbish ones we used to have at school I mean school as in a teacher not school as in when I was a pupil so what I did was um used the lovely stamping up retired tab topper to go on the top and i did for both these found a bit of um text that had some of the green in but actually there's um not a not an awful lot of sort of foliage and actually some of these photos are quite quite nice so I'm thinking that's quite a nice pattern there to make a tab out of quite like that so that will make a nice tab and let's find another photo that will make a nice tab there's all sorts of lovely embroidery and stuff in these pictures so Let's have a look for one that will make a nice tab. Really like that. Reminds me of William Morris. May well be William Morris. Um, so oh, see that wallpaper, lovely. We'll have that for the other one. quite nice the other side as well I've done that on one of the other ones so it matched the picture so put these back so I really am going to try and sort of use as much of this book as possible and I think some things they might not look much to begin with but actually I really like that that makes a really good tab topper. So we want something to decorate the front and then something on the back. I managed to find bits of the page that was um, was plain for the black back of this one. I haven't done so yet for this one. Could put some gesso over it. I haven't used gesso for ages. Um, but let's just find... The picture that I want to use on it. Now I've got a couple cut down. I did have another one cut down which is managing to elude me right now. 
thanks for that. So we've got that. Quite like that. And this here, it's got a bit on that side and a bit on that side. And I thought maybe with a bit of careful tearing, I might be able to get most of what I want. So if I tear there. I'm getting most of that daffs and I've still got all of those. So oh, uh, could leave that end. That covers up most of that. Yep. Liking that. This I might do a little bit of ripping. Let's take the December off. Flip that round. Should really use my paintbrush to weaken it a little bit. Might do that. So if I put a little bit of water on it. Helps with the ripping process. it weakens the fibres a bit there when you've wet. It makes ripping a bit easier and it sort of guides you a bit. That's cool. And get rid of those bits. So I think that works really well. I think there's too much there. So I'm going to use some of that uh, patterned paper with like the um, cross stitch patterns on. I think that will make quite a nice little background. There. So we've got bits where they're plain and bits with sort of the birds on. Um, need a longer ruler here. So what I'm just going to do is get the whole of that off. And I really like the way we get this nice plain bit there. Use that quite a bit. So, quite like that bird, might keep that for something. So we'll take that bit there. might put that on the smaller one. Not on the bigger one. That works a treat. And then some of this. Underneath that covers up some of that words. I'll do it the other way around, have the longer at the top. These coming down would be nice when they're inked. Cover up some of that bit. And then we need some some writing on it. So quite like that. Uh, a little bit there with the crab apple is quite nice.
I know it's a daffodil, but it's quite cool. Quite like that. I want a word there. Put crab apple there. It's quite little. Got a willow warbler. They aren't. I think they're tits, aren't they? Oh, look. So this is where I like to use these words. Ruler ripping works for me. I like the I like the sort of line there. Quite like that. Um, quite like spring. There's a spring somewhere. I think I might have already cut out the spring. There's my little bag of birds. I think in here somewhere there is spring. Maybe just woodland. I can't see spring. So maybe we'll just use woodland up there on that. I think something like a, a doily would work well, but I say I was trying to do it. So I use nothing else other than things from this um, from this book. Right, I'm going to take that bird actually. So I think I might not use that crab apple. I might do that instead. I think that's what we're going to do. Right, so. I said, I just wanted to, although I've got a gazillion amount of stuff now, I know my, uh, I had my nieces up, you might have seen the video of their, flip through their um, first junk journals, and they're like, oh, I've got to buy all this stuff. So I just wanted to sort of show that actually, you don't necessarily need a gazillion amount of stuff, or necessarily buy really old books because this isn't actually vintage I mean it's 20 odd years old but if you've got some nice images um, it actually works quite well that's upside down on the other side but I say it doesn't matter because I am covering it up I might turn that round the other way so you can see that that lines. I like the lines. They appeal to me. You can hear a buzzy fly. I have got the bedroom windows open. Because it is. They're hot. Very hot. There we go. I have that over actually. One of my ears. Get rid please. There, like that. That might be how I am going to do that. Yep, 
something like that. Cover up abbreviations, quite like the fact that I can still see the page number. That works well for me. Right, so let's get these stuck down. And there. So that's me. That's the tags. So that's the narrow one. Go in there. And then we just need a little something to decorate the front of this. And I say we are running out a bit that's quite nice could put a bit of that on so I might have to turn to something else but for now this is fine oh that was rubbish rip. There we go. That's quite large in it, so I need to come down here. Let's rip it. goes down nicely there and I'm going to have a bit of this. that side hmm, what else have we got to go on top of that one I've got half a nest there that. Oh, use that for someone else. Oh, I could stick that underneath. Oh yeah. There we go. Yep, yeah, quite like that. Just a few words required. Maybe that's a willow warbler. I doubt it. A little brown job is what it is. But we'll put willow warbler on it. And I've managed to rip it because I went the short way instead of the long way.
but it's all right. What is the ruler for that bit? I'll just rip it down. Across there. Oh, oh yeah, that's proud apple. There we go. And then on that one, we can have what we got here. Oh, I've just got the end of a word there. White butterfly. Let's have white butterfly. It's quite large actually. So I'll just add butterfly. And then I could put a butterfly on it from one of those ones off the top corners. That would be quite nice. Let's get one from. Oh, that's got other things written on it. Let's get one that hasn't. just just a butterfly I did try fussy cutting rubbish I hope I'm in shot. I'm now just relaxing and creating and uh, not really taking much notice. There we go. Stick that up there. Coolio. That was the glue you were just about to go for then, Jez. There. Let's speed this bit up. So that's that's those bits done. Quite happy with that. I realised that when I was looking at this, I was thinking, all oh, those tabs are really stiff. Is that I cut two out and stuck them together, but they're all right without. And I've decided actually I do want to finish it off properly. So I am going to use this and uh, going to cut a strip, and tear a strip of this to go on the back. Don't like it looking like it's unfinished. So I'm hoping I should be able to get enough for two out of this one bit. So I'll do that. And that will go on there. And then that bit will go on there. So I'm going to just get that inked and stuck and then I'll just finish it off by stitching, stitching around and then I might do the other bits in another video because I imagine this is really long. 
I often look at these and I go, oh my goodness, I've gone on for an hour. And then I try and sort of speed bits up. I mean, I did do the last bit of inking in time lapse. But then I think, oh, some people might put me on in the background whilst they're crafting like I do to others. So it doesn't really matter, does it? There we go. I could just be crafting to myself. It doesn't really matter because I would be doing this anyway. Um, so, yeah. I would like people to be watching and finding it useful and entertaining. But, and if you follow me with my stamping up stuff, then this is very different. Just realised there was a nice little bit of flower there. Never mind. And we're going over that tab a bit, but oh, I don't mind. And then I do like to put little words on there. I might just leave it for the moment so I'll just get that sewn and that will call it a day yeah so that's them all sewn round which was a bit of hard work that last little bit the sewing machine was groaning and moaning and it wasn't going very fast and I think I might be in the market for a new sewing machine um which I worked out, bought, had it when my son was a baby and he's 29 next week. So, yeah, it's not done me bad. So that is that is those those pockets. And these can be stuck on round the three sides so it could actually have another pocket behind. So that was my original. That's the one that isn't sewn, which I think looks nice. And uh, and that's it sewn. That one I decided to go all the way across. Um, so, yeah. Hope you found that useful. And I say, I just wanted to show, uh, particularly my, my niece who's just started, that you don't need a great deal of stuff. This is just one singular book. I've used nothing else but that book. Um, one punch, which, again, you didn't need to use. And um, and some ink to ink it. Didn't have to ink it, but she's got ink, so she could have. So, yeah. I will do these in a different video. And if my sewing machine continues the way it is, the one I make um, won't be sewn. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, all the details will be over on nigeza.co.uk. Um, don't forget to check out my... Uh, junk journal playlist to see my other videos and um, I've got a start to finish um, first my first junk journal and um, and then I've got another playlist with just sort of tags and pockets and things okay see you again soon and if you like me stamping up stuff then um, yeah go check them out as well okay see you again soon